Hi, everyone. Um, I'll go directly introducing myself. I'm a computational biologist at European Molecular Biology Laboratory in Heidelberg. I did my PhD in RNA infection biology, and then I moved to EMBL to become a community manager. Uh, this happened without me knowing it. I got there, and I realized this is my job. So I came, I'm from India, if you couldn't tell. Thank you. I came to Germany 10 years ago um, with, uh, in order to study, to find job, to, you know, to change the scene a little bit. But what I realized that um, I wasn't just moving countries. I was gaining some privileges that my colleagues in India didn't have. Uh, as simple as access to journal, infrastructure, um, or just, you know, free time to philosophize and get paid for it. So what I thought was a global scientific community, I soon realized there was lack of globalness. I'm going to use this word, globalness, which is not a real word. But I found a compromise in open science, because open science makes research resources available online without price barrier and without most permission barriers. Uh, just to refresh here, open science is an umbrella term uh, that involves various movements, uh, scaling from open access to citizen science to open notebook and training, and so on. So open science communities are made of scientists who share this notion of doing science more openly. And it is very important at this stage because research and engineering is more relevant globally than ever. We, we emphasize on information sharing such as data and code because it facilitates advancement. People can, can build upon your work. It also invites scientific talents to contribute and collaborate. And training facilitates skill transfer. It's not the main part of open science, but this is somewhere most of the communities are moving towards. So these are the four themes I'll be touching uh, throughout my talk. So bioinformatic research, information sharing, inclusive efforts, and training. So again, there is lack of globalness in this open science community. For example, in research, reprodu reproducibility is often not the main concern. Information sharing often is limited by who has got the enough resources as you so that they can verify and reproduce your work. An inclusive effort by itself does not mean that you're including and supporting people from various backgrounds, ethnicity, genders, and so on. And then training is not considered a requirement by default. None of these things are incentivized. This is what I'm talking about. So in this talk, I want to propose to move from open science to more inclusive science. Um, in that, I would give you some terminology so we are all on the same page. So first, diversity and inclusion. A lot, a lot of you have already heard of that. So diversity is about attracting different peoples of different skills, background, and experience to work together. So here, the emphasis is not on the word diversity, but the set of skills and experiences that each individual brings. Then inclusion is about empowering these individuals so that they can combine their skill and get the best outcome. Now I'm, I'm giving you third word, which is called inclusiveness. Inclusiveness is inclusion of individuals or group who were previously excluded. It is measured in terms of eligibility, opportunity, and involvement in decision making and leadership. And it is achieved when members are sharing and not competing for resources or power. So if we compare inclusion or inclusiveness, inclusion is a process, and inclusiveness is an outcome of inclusion. Inclusion is providing access to community resources, whereas inclusiveness uh, poses an effort in achieving heterogeneity at the community leadership. So they can make decisions which is beneficial for all its stakeholders. So why inclusiveness is important for open communities? So open science promotes collaborative work. It de democratizes scientific accessibility and engagement. It can assure it will happen. Not really. It cannot assure. Because it is limited by funding and infrastructure. It really depends who's got what resources to engage in science. Um, if people who are in the, in, as a part of your community are encountering negative behaviors based on their career stage, culture, or language, they would probably not feel included. If they are from background or identity that is socially stigmatized in past, they will be apprehensive about being part of your community. 
and people who have previously experienced trauma, harassment, or bullying would find it very hard to come to a community if the community in its core does not hold inclusion as, as its main priority. So now I'm changing my made up word globalness into inclusiveness. So what I was talking about is lack of inclusiveness in open science in communities because open by default does not mean inclusive. So if we wanna promote inclusiveness, we need to be open by design. So what I mean by that, so if we talk about the first two, bioinformatics research, information sharing, there should be low barrier for reproducibility, and they should, all the information that we are trying to build should be scalable and not limited by resources. In past one and a half days, we have spoken about these two topics a lot. So I will be focusing on inclusive effort, which is about welcoming and supportive members based on what they need rather than what we assume they need. Training, which is about empowering individuals by skill transfer. So, a few more motivation before I move into my work. So diverse team leads to a better outcome. So what I mean by that, that when we enter this room, we are not leaving our personal experiences and values behind. We are coming with all those ideas that we have uh, inculcated in, through our life. So same in science, it's not just about choosing a method, but it is also a lot about making choices of what problem to proceed, who to involve, what population to study, what kind of example do I wanna have? And in making these choices, these diverse perspectives are very important. And I'm not just saying this because it sounds great, but, but there have been data studies that, that shows that this is actually true. When you have different uh, set of group who are working together, they positively challenge each other in order to push you to a further achievement. However, we are also lacking diversity at the decision-making level. What you see at the, in the green are the repository for which uh, there are male uh, contributors and the orange is the female contributors. And this has been done on 1,708 bioinformatics uh, GitHub resources. So this clearly shows that we really lack people who are leading the project or who are probably the first authors. So outcome is also important, but at the end we have to realize these are the individuals who, are, who we are talking about. So it's important that we care about their well-being. So there are a few things I wanna talk about is that when, we are, when there are members from minority group who need to keep away from specific space or interaction to avoid discrimination and maintain professional authority, they also experience isolation that affects their me mental health. We don't really talk a lot about mental health, health in science because it's not our topic, but we need to think about it. Then second is, if your organization is inclusive, where working there does not mean that you need to hide a part of yourself. For example, if an LGBTQ community member can come out in your work group, they have, to, they, they have lower le job anxiety they can focus completely on their work rather than worrying about what would people think about me. And doing so, this is an important action. So often I hear people saying, why do I need to talk about this at work? This is not my science, but we need to think about how can we make people truly included in the community. So from moving, moving from here, I'm now talk, gonna talk about my work and why I put inclusiveness at the center of it. So I work in EMBL, it's a flagship in Europe, which serves as a model organization for other institutions. Therefore, we try to build a model that is actually replicable and also good of the quality that others can follow. It is made up of uh, 24 member states. It's an intergovernmental organization and uh, very conveniently, we have freedom to change the policies and governments as per we see our community needs. Talking about bioinformatics, so we are, uh, EMBL is located in four, six sites. Uh, EBI is completely bioinformatics, but the rest of the sites are both mixed, wet lab and bioinformatics. So what you look at the bar, let me see if I can work this. No. So what, what are you looking at here? We have about 50% scientists who are doing in a certain degree of computation. And what you see in the next one, we have the spread of them if they, are blind, uh, if they are PhD, postdoc, fully paid staff scientists who are research software engineers, for example, or the visitors. So we have a mix of all, all of them. So I work on a bio-IT project with Toby Hodges, who's sitting there in yellow t-shirt. And, uh, 
Uh, uh, we focus on four parts in our BioIT project. So BioIT project is a community driven by community members where we try to foster bioinformaticians. We focus on training and consulting, resource coordination, information dissemination, and community building. It is quite important. So every three years we do some sort of survey to identify what do our group leaders think of computation, do they think it's gonna increase or not? So what you see in blue is that they think that the computation need in their group will increase. Yellow is they don't know, no is they, they don't think. And over the year, we have consistently seen that there has been increased engagement of scientists in bioinformatics. So therefore, our work is quite relevant uh, because our role is to bring these individual bioinformaticians together so they can exchange knowledge and feel uh, part of a community. So all four things are also in the same four theme that I introduced earlier. I'm also deputy training coordinator of Elixir Germany, where I try to provide training and computational skill with, uh, along with other colleagues in Denby. Uh, we develop strategies for community engagement and equity, and we also cooperate with other uh, computational and open science community members. So I might be using Denby and in Elixir Germany interchangeably. They, they are basically same organization. Uh, however, Elixir Germany is part of this big elixir that we had been listening to in, in the earlier sessions. So BioIT is one of the main tasks is to provide training and in association with elixir, we have been able to provide a lot of common training. So what you see in green is what uh, training BioIT is providing and the orange is what BioIT is doing along with elixir. Um, we also focus on our advanced learner in order to improve their skills. Because of our collaboration with DenB or Elixir, we have been able to open our training resources to external communities beyond EMBL. So you would see also in orange. Uh, so I've added from 2016 is because that's when I joined. So over the year, we have been able to successfully offer our courses to others. And we also engage with um, external communities, as I said. And these are some of our uh, usual members. I also ran a community assessment to identify what kind of support our community member needs. So this is the distribution of the members who participated in the survey. And uh, about 45% of our members are doing most of computation. The rest of them are doing some sort of computation or not. And when I asked what kind of support would they require, um, one of the biggest things they said that they would like to get specific training. They would like to practice it with others. They would like their supervisors to support a bit more. In that context, we are um, running a lot of inclusive efforts. So we organize task force meeting with volunteer where they are coming in and making decisions with us in terms of how do we strategize our resources. We acknowledge and reward their work, by, which is about creating values. We um, organize a lot of informal seminars, social events, drop-in sessions to build connections with them. And we also do a lot of assessment in order to identify where we can improve. At the end, we also do a big annual barbecue party to thank them for their effort. We also combine uh, with another communities within our local area by doing informal technical seminars or uh, non-technical seminars. And then at the end, we also like to bring global perspective into our work because we know that we are limited by people who we work with. So uh, some of them are the Carpentries, Mozilla, Software Sustainability Institute, and Open Bioinformatics Foundation. Um, for the carpentries, we organize a lot of car carpentries resources, but, but we also involve with other members beyond our own work. Um, as a part of Mozilla Open Leader, I developed a project called Open Storytelling, uh, Digital Storytelling for Shaping Culture, in order to identify how we can individually engage our members. In that, I have collected 30 stories, which I'm still uh, in the process of writing. I'm a current fellow for SSI, um, and my mentor is this amazing uh, Christy Whitaker, who's the research fellow in Turing Institute. And it, in the end, uh, Toby is the current AAAS community fellow, and one of the things that he wants to do is to develop a community handbook, uh, which would be open for contribution by any of you. So if you relate with our work and would like to improve it, it would be really cool. So to end this, my note for promoting inclusiveness, uh, lead inclusive science by inviting diverse perspective. Uh, actively share your work with them. You can do a lot of stuff that we've heard about since morning, and the best way to do is to be open. Shape the culture by engaging with your community, 
and support, recommend, acknowledge, advertise, nominate, and motivate each other. Be a good ally to each other. Step up wherever you can. And with that, this is a very messy slide, but I couldn't have missed anyone. Thank you for listening.